Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. December 29th, Jacob the Shazer. On December 7th, 1941, in a surprise attack, hundreds of Japanese planes attacked Pearl Harbor and inflicted much damage, including eight battleships and more than 300 airplanes. More than 2,400 Americans died, and another 1,000 were wounded. Within a month, the United States had planned its own surprise attack on Tokyo and four other Japanese cities, and in April, the attack was led by Lieutenant Colonel Jimmy Doolittle. Sixteen bombers and 80 volunteer bombardiers were scheduled to attack and then fly to safety of the east coast of China, which they did, but of the 16 bombers, some landed in China and some crashed. Some were helped by the Chinese people, but Jacob and his team were captured by the Japanese. On this date, in 1948, Jacob returned to Japan as a missionary, and during his stay there, he established 23 new Christian churches throughout Japan. Hate cannot destroy a man who is determined to obey Christ. Jacob DeShazer was a bombardier, one of the 80 men in the infamous Doolittle Raid over Japan shortly after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. During the raid, Jacob and his fellow crewmen bailed out of their B-25 bomber over China and were taken captive by the Japanese as prisoners of war. The Japanese moved Jacob from one prison to another where he saw how the Japanese treated Chinese citizens. He wondered how humans could treat others that way. It was the first time that I had ever been in such a wicked environment, Jacob said. He soon realized they would treat him and his fellow air crewmen the same way. They spent most of their time in solitary confinement and faced beatings and the threat of execution nearly every day. They lived on meager rations and received no treatment for illnesses like dysentery and malnutrition. As Jacob endured the endless days with no news of the war or his release, his hatred for his captors deepened. Another prisoner, Lieutenant Robert Metter, had shared the good news of Jesus Christ with Jacob. The Japanese allowed the prisoners a few privileges, so Jacob asked for a Bible. He had been raised in a Christian home, but the Bible had no real significance for him. He sat in his cell under poor lighting and read the scriptures over several weeks. He memorized as much of it as he could. In Romans, he read, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved, Romans 10, 9. Now, Jacob believed in Jesus and became his apprentice. Salvation was in his heart, but his body remained locked in a cell. The day after his conversion, one of the guards assaulted Jacob. The day before, he would have reacted differently, but now he remembered the words of Jesus. You have heard it said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 and 44. Jacob chose to love the guard rather than hate him. He spoke to him kindly no matter the circumstance. And over time, the guard became friendlier. God healed the relationship between prisoner and guard. Jacob spent more than a year after his conversion in captivity. On August 20th, 1945, he was finally released. And only a few years later, he returned to Japan as a missionary, preaching love and forgiveness to the Japanese people. Japanese citizen and former pilot Mitsuo Fuchida had led the attack on Pearl Harbor, the incident that had so deeply angered Jacob. After the war, Fuchida read one of Jacob's pamphlets and became so persuaded that he gave his life to Christ. The pair connected and began to preach alongside one another. Is there someone who you have disagreed with? Maybe even an enemy that you could demonstrate God's love toward? Hate cannot destroy a man who is determined to obey Christ.
Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.